Welcome to this YouTube channel called In Hope of Eternal Life. My name is Opio James and we really glorify God for leading us thus far. We are still on with our Revival and Reformation series and our study for today is entitled Consecration Part 2. Don't forget to like, subscribe and also share with others. And uh, it's very important for you to share because you are not supposed to remain with this light. You're also supposed to disperse this light to others so that others are also enlightened. And so, without wasting time, let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, for granting us another chance as we study and we, as we learn from your feet. Bless us all and teach us your will in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, what is holiness? When you read the book, Our High Calling, page 214, Ellen White writes, Holiness is not rapture. It is the result of surrendering all to God. It is living by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting God in trial, believing in His promise in the darkness as well as in the light. Religion is to walk by faith as well as by sight, trusting in God with all confidence and resting in His love. So, there are several things that are mentioned in this quotation that actually you know tell us what holiness is all about so it's living by everything that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god it is doing the will of our heavenly father we are told in psalms chapter 40 verse 8 speaking of jesus christ that i delight to do thy will oh my god thy law is within my heart and so it is also trusting in god in trial believing it is promised in the darkness as well as in the light and so friends we are told in Selected Messages, Book 1, page 366, No man can cover his soul with the garments of Christ's righteousness while practicing known sins or neglecting known duties. God requires the entire surrender of the heart before justification can take place. And in order for man to retain justification, there must be continual obedience through active living faith that works by love and purifies the soul. And so, do not expect to be covered with the righteousness of Christ, yet you are cherishing a known sin. But then, friends, you might ask me a question. What is sanctification? Now, I would like to tell you something. There are actually three things that you should know. There are three st steps in the process of salvation. The first one is justification. The second one is sanctification. And the third one is glorification. Now, justification is when we accept Christ and we are baptized. And so Christ himself imputes his righteousness to us. And so the Father looks at us as if we have never sinned. And in justification, we are saved from the penalty of sin. But friends, even after this, we are actually told to die daily. That's like, just like the Apostle Paul, he says, I die daily. Still, even after accepting Christ, you need every single day of your life to still continue being obedient to God. And this involves a lot. And this is the state of sanctification. Friends, sanctification is a state of holiness without and within, being holy and without reserve. The Lord is not in form but in truth. Every impurity of thought, every lustful passion separates the soul from God. For Christ can never put his robe of righteousness upon a sinner to hide his deformity. And so in sanctification, we are saved from the power of sin. And then friends, when we reach the final step of glorification, that is we are saved from the presence of sin. It is just like uh, let me bring in the school setting into, you know, bring in these three things. When you, you know, uh, apply you know, to enter this particular university and you are granted an opportunity to, you know, study at that university, that is justification. Now, when you enter this university, you don't sleep, you have to attend lectures, you have to do exams. That is sanctification. And after that, you have graduation, that is glorification. I don't know whether we are following. So God wants us to live in victory, not defeat. And because sanctification is a state of holiness, it means victory over certain self and the world. We need to have the faith of Jesus. As the Holy Spirit works in us, we need to believe that Jesus can do it for us. And so friends, holiness and sanctification is the same thing. 
and without it we cannot go to heaven to see the Lord. We are told in Hebrews chapter 12 of verse 14 that we should pursue holiness without which no man will see the Lord. And so friends, what does it mean to be clothed with the garment of Christ's righteousness? We are told in Christ's object lessons, page 311, listen carefully. By his perfect obedience, he has made it possible for every human being to obey God's commandments. When we submit ourselves to Christ, the heart is united with his heart. The will is merged in his will. The mind becomes one with his mind. The thoughts are brought into captivity to him. We live his life. This is what it means to be clothed with the garment of righteousness. And so friends, everything that we do is actually what Christ would have done. Our heart is marked with his, our will is marked with his, our mind is marked with his, our thoughts are brought into captivity to him and we live his life. Friends, that is what it means to be closed with the righteousness of Christ. So we must cooperate, to, you know, to you must cooperate with God and we must accept the Holy Spirit is leading in our lives. And this is through sincere repentance and determined effort. But then how can you be an overcomer? You might ask that question. Friends, gaining salvation is a joint operation or a joint cooperation. Are you following me? You cannot be an overcomer just on your own. For we are told in John chapter 15 verse 5, without, without me you can do nothing. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so this process of being victorious over sin is a joint operation. Second step, claim God's promise and ask him to strengthen you. We are told actually in Matthew 7, 7 that seek and you shall, that ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and you shall be opened unto you. Friends, we are told in messages to young people, page 97, ask him to strengthen you for fresh endeavor. He will never disappoint you, never, ab never abuse your confidence. And so friends, you need to claim God's promise and ask, ask him to strengthen you. Number three, constant dependence upon God is needed. Friends, those who fail to realize their constant dependence upon God will be overcome by temptation. You need to constantly depend upon Christ. Only through realizing our own weakness and looking steadfastly unto Jesus can we walk securely. And then constant communion with God through sacred prayer. Friends, when you read Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, page 189, listen carefully. It is impossible for the soul to flourish while prayer is not a special exercise of the mind. Family or public prayer alone is not sufficient. Sacred prayer is very important. In solitude, the soul is laid bare to the inspective eye of God and every motive is scrutinized. And so, friends, you need to commune with God through sacred prayer. We are told in Great Controversy, page 530, no man is safe for a day or an hour without prayer. We must guard, uh, we must constantly guard against the devices of Satan. We should pray in faith continually, lead us not into temptation. And then friends, constant dependence upon the word of God. We are told in Ephesians 6, 17 that, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is how you can be victorious. You can be an overcomer. And then, friends, another point, you need to exhibit unselfish labor for others. And so, friends, when you don't labor for others, when we, you don't work in Christ's vineyard, then it's very, very hard for you to be an overcomer. For we are told in the Bible, in Romans 14, that no man liveth unto himself, or no man dieth unto himself. We are actually designed to you know, serve others. And so Jesus himself is our perfect example. He showed us how you know, to overcome. He actually relied upon the Father, he trusted the Father, and also he directed us to the scriptures as the only safeguard against the wiles of the enemy. And it is possible to overcome. I repeat, it is possible to overcome because Christ's victory is our Christ's victory is our perfect example. Friends, God will not allow trials more than we can handle. 
We are told that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And so we can overcome through God's power. Let us listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and cooperate with him by consecrating ourselves fully to him. Let us come to Christ and ask him to give us his love. And we cannot give to others what we do not have. And so, friends, we need to come to Christ and you know, ask him to give us his love. And friends, when we do that, we shall really be blessed Christians in this world. May God bless you so much. Let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, for this powerful message you've shared with us. May you teach us to be loving Christians. May you teach us to minister to others. And may you teach us daily to rest our faith in your word. Bless us and let your will be done in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with others. Maranatha, Jesus is coming.